Hey there, welcome to the second part of a little series we did called The Return of the East L.A. Cutaway. Now, this guitar, I actually found it in East Los Angeles, hanging on a garage wall, neck off, all kinds of cracks everywhere, no pickup, tuners, everything was gone. And I ran it through the shop about a year and a half ago, two years ago, and did a playlist on everything we did to the guitar. It's history, the story, um, all kinds of stuff. So, fast forward, it came back. Um, the Gibson tuners I put on it weren't the best thing for it, and you'll be able to see that in the episode I just did. I'll give you a link to it right up there. Uh, but we put new tuners on. They're a bit beefier. They go better with the big strings that are going on this guitar because they're not always trying to back off or strip in a little bit or things like that. I put a Shatton thumb wheel volume and tone control underneath this pick guard uh, that has a, a, uh, a graphic on, done it by Laurent Bompart who is in Europe. Uh, but the whole thing about this guitar is I didn't want to put any holes in it that I didn't have to. I put a pickup on it. It's a K pickup. You could call it a pancake, Kleenex box, whatever. But at the end of the day, I tried to not put extra holes in. But this thumb wheel set of tone and volume control didn't turn out to be the ticket. And I'll tell you why. Um, when we take this apart and rig it up with conventional wiring and potentiometers with knobs. So let's get on that and get to the bench. Okay guys, before I throw this in the Stumac guitar workstation, you ever see one of these? They're pretty handy. I want you to notice that when we were doing the tuner part, I took a piece of tape and made sure that the knot was in place. And I'm not gonna put the strings back on until we get the next part of this done. But I can simply put this guitar here, turn this thumb wheel, and adjust this pretty much any way I want. And we are going to be working on this part right here so I can get to it, I can elevate it. Also notice that I put, where's Chick Flick Teal Pointer, tape on the trapeze so it's not slamming down. And I also marked off where the floating bridge goes, and you can see that I sanded this down. I actually had a piece of sandpaper on top of here and went back and forth and sanded this floating bridge to the top of the guitar because you can see there were big cracks here. There was all kinds of things going on. This guitar actually has, if you feel down in here, there are big tone bars that run down with the neck. They would actually in the factory file those down a little bit and try to match the sound but these big bodies have tone bars instead of all kinds of bracing that turns into an issue if you're going to put say Gibson 57 pickups in one of these which I have done and we're going to call that one the restaurant junk pile there is a link to that playlist right up there so what we're going to do now is there's a, a slatten tone control and volume control mounted right here on this pick guard. I'm going to pull that off and show you what it is. I'm not taking this off because it didn't work. It worked great. And remember, the whole idea was not to drill holes for potentiometers and to cut holes in the body. This K pickup actually came out with guitars during this time frame, late 50s, early 60s. And so the only holes in here are holes for these screws and one for the wire that goes down through the F hole and comes up to the controls. I used, let's loosen this up just a little bit. I took out the strap button and used a pin end jack and ran the wiring through there so I didn't have to mess with anything. The ground for the jack actually sits on the end. You can tell where I've worked because there's chick flick teal paint everywhere. Anyway, 
let's get this off. I'll flip it over and show you what we'd done before. Let's get into a few details here. If you look up here where anything touches the top of the guitar, this is actually one of those little grommets that you run electrical wiring through. Say you were to drill a hole in the firewall of a car to hook up your FM <laughs> converter or your 8-track tape player and you need a hot wire off the battery, you would put one of these rubber grommets that popped into the edge of the hole. Simply cut one of those in half, it protects everything. Um, this is actually, I made this out of a Patron box. I use Camacho boxes when I do my cigar box guitars, you know that, but there is a use for Macho boxes, excuse me, Patron boxes, they make, this is good. And of course it had a Laurent bomb part graphic on the back. But this is a Shatton thumb wheel control and they're really, really handy. They're really easy to um, use and to install. The only thing you have to worry about is that when you're using something like this little capacitor that jumps between two connections points here that you use a little clip or something as a, a heat sink because if you don't, your soldering uh, iron will burn this up and then everything will be gone. But it's really pretty simple. There are three connections configured this way. You've got a ground. You've got your wire coming in from your uh, input jack. And then you have your hot wire coming in off of your pickup um, and then the capacitor just jumps across to these two which turns this one into a tone and this one into a volume now this thing worked perfectly always very dependable but the problem is is that it is stuck with two-sided tape and sooner or later things start working loose and then people don't want to trust it so um, as far as Shatton goes, their product is excellent. I couldn't say enough good things about it, but two-sided tape on junk pile guitars being played pretty rough and being pitched around. Now that the thing needs to come off, it doesn't want to, but it was starting to separate there. But there you go. I will take this apart. And I will use it in another configuration. But you got jazz guitar players that have some really good stuff using this. As far as price, by the time you get to this, this to the door, you're going to be paying about $40 a unit. Okay, guys, you're going to want to keep good track of your stuff and how it's wired. So I am just going to leave bits of this stuff here and make that cut there. We can see closer now. Ground wire, input jack, hot wire from pickup, capacitor jumping from this side to this side, turning this into a tone. You can wire this any number of ways. The wiring instructions that they send you are incredible. But again, nothing wrong. Like, I'll tell you what, this is a total thumbs up for this product. Okay, even though this is pushback wire, I use this all the time. I'm going to strip just a little bit off the end so we can wire some things up. But when it comes time to put in the volume pot and the tone control pot, I want to pay attention to what I've done here. And I remember on this guitar, there was a crack running from here to here. And then you can see several cracks up in this area as well as on the other side I had to do a lot of crack repair which means I put some splints in where the grain of the 
of the patches was running this way where the grain here is running this way. So if I take my thumb and put it here, I've got a splint here, here, and one up here. So I have to think about that when I'm putting in and picking out my volume pot. So it's just a matter of drilling a hole and then using the graduated step bit and making sure that I can reach inside of here and back up the volume and tone pots when I'm tightening up everything and then just putting this back on and making sure nothing gets in the way. All right, guys, here we go. Let's catch up a little bit. There's a heater running in the background. That's the first time this fall that that's happened in the shed, but oh well, I'd rather have it be that than 118. So let's catch up. We took off this Shatner double thumb wheel control. Uh, this thing worked great. Again, can't speak highly enough of it. We could use this on a stomp box, a tin can microphone, whatever we wanted. Uh, an arch top that um, gets pampered well. And if I were to make one change to this, I would want to put mounting tabs on this somewhere where I could use screws. But hey, good stuff. So we've replaced it with a conventional set of pots. There's one um, pickup pancake, Hershey bar, Kleenex box, whatever you want. It's original K stuff. And then we've got two pots here. Uh, while we're here, um, if we turn it the way it's supposed to look down, let's do it that way. Um, the outside uh, pot on the left side goes to ground. Um, the center goes to the pickup and the outside or right one goes to the jack that jumps to the let's do these the same way so everybody can see that one jumps from the jack to the center lug of the tone pot and then there is a capacitor that goes from uh, the outside or the left lug and then grounds itself and the ground jumps back to the volume pot. A um, couple things. Um, if you are going to be doing um, tone capacitors, you want to use a clamp and do a, a heat sink when you're soldering those or you're going to end up melting the capacitor. Some of them are, are kind of fine. Another thing that will help you out is I've made a series of these alligator clip leads so if you're switching from something like this to your wiring harness you can make sure everything works ahead of time by having a few of these that are color coded um, this one here is uh, for the pickup wire this one is for ground and this one is for the jack and that way I know what they are when I'm watching them so um, Something else you want to do before you get everything in is I have a little PV amp up here that is not live until it's plugged in. And then I can just, with these outside of the body, I can just and kind of turn my tone and make sure everything works ahead of time. I use pushback wire. It's coated. It's like this old cloth stuff, and you just do that. It's pretend. I have three different colors that I typically use. Good stuff. Um, got a good soldering gun with a uh, temperature control, and of course my holder has a sponge in it. You always want to use a sponge when you're doing soldering. What else do we have here? Oh. I have this span wrench. You gotta love this thing. It's got teeth here, it's got teeth here, and it's great for putting on things like nuts on your potentiometers when they're in the guitar. Um, what else do I want to tell you? Oh, I always swear by Loctite thread locker. Once I get everything where I need it to be, get a rag out and then put a spot of thread lock on here because you don't want these things coming loose. When your pots start coming loose, they start twisting around. The next thing you know, there's 
wires coming off. Um, when it comes to drilling holes, I started off using a pilot bit. Can you see that? And then I use a step bit. I've told you about step bits. They're nice. Uh, they drop down little by little. Uh, this one does not have such a steep angle. And then the one thing that you cannot be without when it comes to doing this kind of work is a reamer. So you can go in a little bit sideways here and make everything nice because if you don't do this right and you use big bits, you'll blow wood out on the inside. So last thing I want to show you is I use a bent coat hanger throw a loop in it I can get down into the F holes and I can pull a piece of dental floss let me show you this take a piece of dental floss hope my camera angle is right but you just pull a piece of dental floss like so you pull a loop in it like this tie that off and then if you've done any crane and rigging in the oil field, you know that you can pick up two 55-gallon barrels with a chain by doing that. You see that? You just take your fingers through, loop like this, and what do you know? You can put that on your volume pot. And what I've done here is I have already fished dental floss. Of course, I put my pit guard where it needs to go so I can make sure that the holes were drilled in the right place. But anyway, I've used a couple alligator clamp clips here and got everything in place. So when it comes time that I want to fish my potentiometers in, this one goes to there. And of course, I wasn't ready for this, but I have a tooth washer. You see this? I always love these. I've got one of those there. And now all I'll do is pull those two loops over the pot, tighten it up like so. See that? And I'll do the same thing with this one over here. Once I get my top washer nut off, like so. Of course, nothing is. helping me here put my tooth washer on there and there we go I just simply drop these down into the body of the guitar through the F hole like so and then I can use the dental floss to pull them up into place. Okay, I think we've got this one about okay, I think we've got this one about ready to feed through. There it is, and if we've set up our washer and not in the right place over the dental floss like so we should be good to go now you want to make sure when everything's loose that you are have everything turned the right way so open or set everything down to the lowest setting and make sure you know where you're at and then you can take your span wrench and while you're holding it tighten everything up like so 
and a little spot of Loctite there with a paper towel ready to go is going to save you a ton of problems later in life. Last thing I want to show you is I am a firm believer in shrink wrap. I have a ton of it. It's pre-cut. Whenever you're doing your connections on your potentiometers, get the wires between the lugs covered in shrink wrap. So, I am going to put the Laurent Bompart custom pit guard back on this thing. And then we will set the bridge and do our intonation by measuring from the nut to the 12th fret and then 12th fret to the center of the bridge. And this thing will be ready to go. Now I think I've mentioned this before, but I use these rubber grommets that are used to protect wires going through metal. I cut them in half and I put them underneath the pit guard. That way you've got some cushion. Whenever you've got a screw running into wood, if there's not a little bit of give, it'll start wearing loose after a while. But that is how I do that. All right, let's see what we got. This is a big bodied thing. It's clamped down on the vise, but it's still pretty loud. Got this little amp on here. Up jump, the worst music you ever heard anyone play on a guitar. Now that's supposed to be Preaching Blues Up Jump the Devil by Robert Johnson. There's a guy on the internet will teach you how to play that song very quickly. Link right up there, right about now. Okay, so it's always a pleasure to have these old things come back to my shop. Even if it's to tell me the shat and thumb wheel control. Yeah, don't covet this. I see y'all wanting it. It's going to go on something else. That was a little too fancy for the kid this is going to. And he was beating on this thing so badly that Gibson Deluxe Tuner wouldn't cut the mustard. So, hey, always good to have these guitars back. If you like watching the junk I do to the junk like this, give me a like and a subscribe, and I will have some other phony adventure to take you on very soon.